Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in X-Plane 11, where we are going to test out the Reality Expansion Pack, REP, for the default Cessna Skyhawk. So it gets saved as a new plane to distinguish it from the default one, and I put it in a new folder. Uh, so, but basically the basic airplane is just the default plane, and then everything else is on top of that. And let me show you exactly what it entails. It is payware. And thankfully I got it on sale during the July 4th sales. So here is the page on xplane.org store. And uh, first of all, realistic flight and ground dynamics, taxi behavior, speeds, not that impressive. Uh, weight and balance though might be important. Realistic engine simulation with propeller animations, correct fuel consumption. We will have to see that in action. Uh, the oil system, oil viscosity, changeable oil type, oil pump failures, realistic oil filter, and uh, fuel filter, fuel pump, interchangeable spark plugs, spark plug fouling, uh, and of course uh, startup procedure, temperatures, uh, stall warning horn, gyro drift, uh, engine parts are damaged if not managed correctly. Realistic landing gear, damaged by hard landings, brakes and tires are damaged, and then the battery is realistic. So basically, realism overhaul for the stock Cessna Skyhawk, and uh, sound overhaul, interactive walkthrough, walk around, sorry. Um, towing, I don't know too much about, we'll have to see, uh, maybe in the case of uh, flying a glider, but... Um, Weight and balance tool, pop-up knee board, simulation state saving is super important in this case. Obviously, if you're going to be having all these systems, you have to make sure that their state is saved from one flight to another. Though, of course, that will not carry over to the flights in Microsoft Flight Sim, so that's a problem. RIP drives head shake, so I've got the head shake plugin, which is free, uh, to simulate the correct vibrations of the engine. I'm not entirely sure I've got that working quite right, so we'll have to see. Here is the flight path from Hayward, of course, uh, our hub, our home. And we're going to fly out to San Luis Obispo down here. Uh, estimated flight time, 1 hour and 53 minutes, it says. And that should be okay. Okay, given that and the fact that we don't have FS passengers in X-Plane 11, the best I am able to do right now, I, I know there have been other options offered and I'll have to take a look at those, but right now I'm still going with SimBuddy because I haven't given it a full try yet. And uh, we have this airline in SimBuddy, Raise Aerospace, but it's, it's got curious numbers here. First of all, uh, because you have to pay your bills every month, um, and that's a heck of a bill, 180000 is more expensive than the one plane I have, the Cessna, so that's weird. Uh, but yeah, we have no balance, and somehow our airline reputation is 108 out of 100, so, and I haven't done any flights, so that's, that's peculiar. But available flights, uh, we are planning to do, you have to uh, indicate that you have certain routes and Hayward, San Luis, Obispo, uh, San, San, San Luis County Regional Airport, I should say. And we can fly route, and it gives us the weather at arrival here, though for some reason the weather at departure isn't showing up. So the Cessna, in-flight model, general aviation. Uh, estimated earnings 1411 which is like nothing when you take a look at the monthly cost of 180000 So we'll probably never be able to make this work out for us. Total fuel burn. Well, maybe we should go back to Explain 11 and see. Explain 11. Payload weight 100 and... Well, that's the payload weight. And we're going to up that. I need to carry passengers and everything. Let's say we've got uh, three people around 150 pounds average they better be reasonable weight now it's a two hour flight let's say and I'm gonna pack an extra hour and 20 minutes which is quite a lot already so that's 163 pounds I see it as 74 kilograms total flight time I expect two hours route it wants the route. Well, I'm gonna just plug in this route here. 
and hope it's okay. Or I could use that one. You have to ensure your fuel is accurate, flight time is accurate, must depart within two hours of accepting the route, ensure your aircraft is on the ground before accepting, all these things. In flight is activated, number of passengers, cargo, let's accept. Let's see if this is, okay, flight accepted. All right, so in theory, I need to fly this now. All right. Okay, well, Hayward Executive, everything seems to be a go. Uh, let's not start with engines running, that's going to be part of the fun of it. And um, we should taxi and everything, so let's start at the ramp. Uh, commuter parking, East General Aviation parking, I think. Okay, so we are now in the Cessna Skyhawk, and the new stuff is sort of tucked over here. We've got a knee board, which is sort of important. Uh, we've got reference information. Look at all this. Emergency procedures, air speeds, engine failure, the whole works. Basically the flight manual. And uh, yeah, we've got cruise performance, landing performance, normal operation, seatbelts fastened. I'm gonna assume that since we don't have any bodies, it's about okay. I don't know what the sound is. We hear a sound. Um, yeah, brakes should be set. Let me get rid of the yoke. Ah, is that, I think that's set, yeah. Okay, so fuel selector both, yep. Fuel shutoff valve in, yep. Circuit breakers check. They look fine. Beacon on, yes. Avionics switch off. Um, okay, they were on for some reason initially. Uh, master on, yeah. Throttle one quarter. And uh, mixture idle cutoff. Auxiliary pump on. If engine cold. I think we can safely assume that the engine is cold, maybe. So pump on. Mixture rich until three to five gallons per hour, then cut off. Then ox. Oh, it's. Dang it. It's flooded by fuel. Shoot. Okay, I was busy reading. I didn't... Uh... Okay, so it says set mixture full lean max throttle. And crank the engine. Oh, okay, it just takes longer than I thought. Okay. <laughs> my my whole problem don't turn on the electric fuel pump no I should turn that off okay well that was a nightmare um, but apparently my big problem was I just wasn't holding down the starter for long enough more used to cars than planes Ooh, what is that sound okay I've launched sim buddy in flight Load passengers. Let's do that. Ready to go. Okay, we've loaded passengers. So, good times. Hopefully. Now, the other features, we've got the mass and balance thing, but we have to have the engines off for that. Oh, same for the rock around. Okay, we'll do that. I should have done that earlier. You can tow a plane only when the ground's... I should have done all this ahead of time. Same with the maintenance report. I guess we'll handle that when we land. So, I need the avionics on now. Gotta enter my flight plan into the GPS clear. Okay, well, let's see what goes on, shall we? 
Well, air traffic control is still going to be annoying as hell. But file flight plan, KSBP, en route altitude, 6,000 feet. Route, well, I can give it the route. I don't know if it'll mean anything to it. Request altimeter. November 172 Sierra Papa Kilo Hotel Whiskey Delta Altimeter 3001. Okay. 3001. And I think we're ready to go. So, throttle down, and there we go. Why, why, why did people suddenly go panicky? That was the sound of people screaming in pain and suffering. I don't understand. Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. That, uh, their happiness is 25%. Oh, belts unfastened. How do I tell them to fasten their belts? Oops. Oh boy, oh boy. Spark plugs fouling, raised RPM. Oh. Um. Oh boy. Hold on. Oh. Well, there goes all their happiness. Um. Okay, belts fastened. Health 21%. Man, they're squeamish. Okay. Well, this light is a bust. <laughs> okay, um, hopefully the spark plugs aren't doing too badly. like my camera to be a little higher. All right. Well, things have sure changed. No question about that. Well, they're gaining happiness now, so that's good. Their health is down to 21% though, which is not so good. Okay, we seem to have SJC, but wait. Well, that's ground speed. The track is 146. Okay. Well, we seem to be headed basically 146. And we can see SJC there. Good times. Well, the passengers have 100% happiness now, but still just 21% health. How weak are they that a little bit of taxiing causes them to suffer so much? I suppose I ought to get fuel flow down into the green area, huh? This is probably going to wear out my fuel pumps or something. So I'm going to do that. I'll throttle down. We can adjust the mixture a bit. Doesn't seem to be needing too much of that. Temperature is fine, pressure is fine. Oh, there's some ominous clouds here. Maybe I'm gonna level out at 5,000 feet instead of 6,000. We can see San Jose International there. And we don't need to have this much throttle, feels like. A lot of air rushing through. Oh, we got some hills up ahead, and it's pretty darn cloudy. Let me check my maps. It says that we need to be at 6,000 feet to really clear everything in our path. 5,600, technically. So, we do need to keep climbing.
good thing I got the instrument flight stuff. So, I'm qualified to do this, right? Right. Didn't get the certificate, but still, I got the training. Current mission saying it's harmful? Oh. Hey, wow, it really tells you a lot of stuff. It actually warned me about the mixture setting. But look at the fuel flow suddenly. Fuel flow is awful low. But I appreciate the feedback it gives. These little messages telling me when I'm doing something wrong. Rather handy. Well, since the very beginning of the flight where I didn't have them fats in their seatbelt before taxiing, things seem to be going all right. I don't know what kind of damage I've already caused to the plane though. I mean, we're apparently going quite fast. We're at 5,500 feet and the terrain is just skimming on by. Well, we're at a good altitude. I'm gonna take it easy for a bit until I'll have to hold the altitude. It's probably quieter outside. Oh wait, clouds are building up. Let's see. Nah, it's pretty loud out here too. Ooh, really loud from that angle. Okay, so it says our fuel flow is 7 gallons per hour. We really only have a flight time remaining of 1 hour anyway. And looks like we have plenty of fuel for that. Okay, well, we are right on track. As you can see, the autopilot is doing fine. I initially didn't want to use autopilot for these flights, but... Gotta admit... It's nice to look out and just enjoy it every now and again. So after this uh, trip in the Cessna 172, we're going to take it on over to Mojave Airport. And there we are going to pick up a little bit of a DOD mission, Department of Defense. And basically they're looking for contractors, uh, little uh, small time pilots like myself, for a special mission. And they promised that we are going to receive fighter jet training, though which jet uh, will come as a shock and a surprise, if you will. And yeah, and then we're going to have a little bit of a storyline with that. And that will expand my flight career adventure. Of course, that jet is not going to be automatically part of my my own holdings, if you will. Right now, I've got two planes to my name, the Cessna Skyhawk here, and the Lancair Legacy, as far as my in-game situation. Though I've been allowed to test fly certain other planes as pros prospective purchases, I guess you could say. Now, whether... Uh, the military would accept a private contractor that only has 20 hours of flight time in his log, I doubt. But, you know, they might be desperate. <laughs> um, it's something, you know. It is also a very odd mission. So, there is that. They need somebody expendable anyway. Alright, well, somewhere over there underneath those clouds is Monterey, Salinas and Pr uh, more, most directly Prunedale. Prunedale is like right below us. And then there's Salinas and Monterey out there. But we can't see them. To our left is Hollister. And... I don't know if that's... It, it, I don't think it's just that tiny town. I think Hollister is more... I don't know. Tough for me to see exactly where Hollister is. I think this little tiny town is San Juan Batista. That's what that is. And Hollister is a little bit further out there. That sort of orange patch. I think that's Hollister. 
And we've got mountains. Well, these mountains are the reason why we are flying at 6,000 feet. Looking good though. Nice trees. Probably in the summertime at which we're flying it would look a little bit drier than it looks right now. Well, the clouds to our right have cleared up, so if we take a look through that back window, we can see Salinas now. And beyond it, you can sort of see Monterey Bay. And maybe you can see the peninsula of Monterey over there. The highway next to us is 101, that line right there. Very important highway in California. Okay, well now the terrain looks really dry. <laughs> Those look like they they don't have much water on it. And the ones to the right also look pretty dry too. So we are over Gonzales and headed towards Soledad is the next town up ahead, basically following Highway 101 right now. And somewhere up ahead and to the left is Pinnacles National Park. Though if there's any green at Pinnacles National Park, I can't see it from here. All looks pretty brown right now. Little trees alongside creeks and such. Okay, well, nothing has gone visibly horrible yet. So, I guess we're fine. I mean, I didn't start the plane properly. We had other problems. I've set the mixture incorrectly a few times. So, you know. There's always the possibility things can go wrong. We are a little bit off track here, so let me make a quick correction with the autopilot. This is how it looks outside. Very nice. Okay, we have passed King City. And on the Sky Vector map, there's an interesting note. And so I'll just quickly turn to that. Uh, so if we take a look at where King City is King City is right here and it says caution intensive aerobat aerobatic activity sea supplement there's Greenfield which we recently passed as well I wonder about that aerobatic activity Notice to pilots, California condors, endangered species, regularly fly in this area. Pilots are requested to maintain 3,000 feet terrain clearance over this area. Um, we're actually sort of to the west of that. You can sort of see the track of Highway 101. And then down here we've got a, there's a restricted airspace area, but we're not passing over that. But I don't know about these hunter regulated areas. Seems to be just low level stuff. Flight operations below 1,000 feet over the designated areas within Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary violate NOAA regulations, but that's off the coast. Well, I haven't really read all the supplements, but that's probably why they plotted the path to the east instead of letting us go directly over that. Technically, I'm skirting the edge right about here-ish in order to get to San Luis Obispo. Yeah, the area to our right is U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hunter Liggett. Don't know what that's all about, but we're technically outside of its boundary, but just barely.
Incidentally, we've been holding indicated airspeed of 100 knots all this time, pretty much exactly with no problems. I haven't had to adjust the throttle for the last 40 minutes or so, and it's just continued on at 100 knots exactly. Pretty consistent. No knocking about, it's clear skies around California, there's no, no dramatics. I guess this is what California is all about at the end of the day. Just very calm weather. Nothing to be fussed about. Okay, we are now 15 minutes out from San Luis Obispo. And we can see the Pacific Ocean nicely now. Interesting reflections on the wing from the surface. It's pretty clear that the green of the surface is reflecting on our wing up there. Otherwise, I've suddenly developed green wings somehow. Yeah, you can actually see a lot of the green reflecting off of the body of the Cessna. Look at that. Pretty vibrant green, I have to say, down there. That's some um, serious, vivid coloration on the ground. Well, at this point, it seems prudent to take a look at the terminal procedures for San Luis County Regional Airport, KSBP, which is where we're headed. And we can see a track going in here, and then 110 into the runway. ILS runway 11 and then the other option is runway 29 and then there's also a small runway 7 and 25 but I'd rather they allow us to just use the big runway <laughs> if, if that's all possible um, so there's all the details in the terminal procedures handbook and you can download this from uh, the FAA website is the VOR approach. And you can see very similar to what we've been familiar with from the flight sim uh, lessons. Yeah, let's try 109.7 and then we should come in at 196 degrees. We probably should have already been doing that. Well, we're way ahead of schedule this time. I overcompensated. According to the two hours I gave myself, we've got 39 minutes left. So we can certainly afford to take it slow if we want to. We've got a full ILS sort of situation here. And we're going to try and pick it up properly. And we need to tune this to 11. I mean, of course, we don't need to do that. We've got all sorts of navigation options available to us. We don't have to go for ILS approach when it's broad daylight with no clouds or anything. But it couldn't hurt. I wonder if uh, the appropriate station that we're supposed to be looking at is visible. Is this a uh, sea a crepe? It's this crepe. That is where we pick it up from. I'll show you the plan. So you can see here at crepe, uh, 3,300 feet is the bottom of the glide slope. Well, I mean, really, we should be at 3,300. So uh, let's, and then a uh, Jampo's there, Zerva. So we've got the whole plan there. Let's try it out. I need to descend, obviously. So, no more altitude hold, and let's throw down. Okay, looks like we're picking up November the track nicely. Zero, one X-ray, Papa, climb and maintain flight level 350. I... Up to flight level 350, November, zero, 01 X-ray, Papa. I regret tuning Los Angeles control now. Okay, that's good. 
So the next important station is this Jampo, and at that we have to be at 2,400. But that's a ways away actually. Well, there we are. We are on the ILS track according to that. Let's start making sure we are descending. Up, yeah, yeah, we're losing it. We're losing it. This is quite a terrain. That's an interesting peak right there, actually. Oh, we're still way too high now. We can actually see the runway pretty clearly in front of us. Outer marker. And we're rather to the right here. I don't know if uh, somebody deducts points for the flap setting or for the fact that I kept the seat belts fastened for the entire flight. I felt it prudent to keep the seat belts flat fastened for the entire flight considering their health was at 21% just because I was taxiing without them with their belt without having them have their belts on. So, you know. Okay, right on the ILS. Well, now we've passed the thing, so we just have to land now. A bit rough. Ow. Ow, ow. I think that's like the realistic landing gear stuff. Okay. I hope I didn't do too much tire damage, but we're gonna find out. Center, November, zero, one, x-ray, Papa. Okay, no runway... Oh, there it is. Runway exit line. Spark plugs are fouling. Okay, raise engine RPM. Wow, wow. Whoa. Lots of drift. I guess I can just November park off the side here somewhere. Papa, why heading 340? Heading three four zero November zero one X ray Papa. Well, I'm just gonna park here. Okay. Taxi apron, then stop, then offload passengers. Okay. Well, uh, let's choke that. Shut off. Uh, AV, oh, sorry, AVX master switch off. And that can be off. May damage the radios, huh? Okay, well, offload passengers. Unfasten their seatbelt, yes. Okay, so that is done. Goodbye. Flight complete. All right, first let's check Simbody and see how that all shaped up. Okay, so flight log. We completed one flight, three passengers, and two hours it says, but it gives me a little notification up there. But we didn't get any money for it, apparently. I don't know. Hmm. One flight. It uh, that just accepts the fact that I flew for two hours, even though it was actually less than two hours. That doesn't affect uh, my own flight log. I mean, I can go to uh, where's my own information. Well, first I have to close this, I guess. Okay. So with the log book, it knows the exact duration of the flight. And it says, good distance flown, sync rate excellent, I suppose. Landing lights were off. Oh, I forgot. This one likes to dock me for the landing lights. Um, one hour and fi uh, 35 minutes is what it had there. Well, so I don't know about 
but whether I'm satisfied with sim buddies. Uh, it, it gave me a score actually. I guess I could show you that on the in-flight bit. This is the in-flight dialogue. I'm making it bigger than it actually is. But you can see a uh, score only 30 out of 100. The happiness at the end was 82%. Health, 21%. Um, sync rate, what it says there. But not much transparency as to why the score was what it was, except apparently my landing lights weren't on. Uh, so maybe that's the thing. Okay. But what we're really interested in is this reality expansion pack and what it has to say. Mass balance, uh, though I don't think um, the reality expansion pack knew that I had three passengers. Uh, let's let's add that in. Uh, can we? Seventy-five. Seventy-five. So that would move it up there and obviously the center of gravity moves to the back but still in the safe region I think our tanks were not very full let's say 50 that really gets it to the top there flight time well the center of gravity at landing depends on the flight time and okay well so that shifts it down obviously okay well anyway that's interesting information but let's get to the serious stuff. Let's check the plane. Parking brake set. Avionics is off. Ignition switch off. Master switch on. Okay. Uh, let's go post light though. Okay. Probe temperature. Toggle pitot tube cover. Okay. Well, now we're at two. Tail tie down. We'll tail tie down. Oop. Okay. Oh, we're just tying stuff down. Okay. Right wheel chocks. Check for security and oil leaks. Induction air. Well, anyway, we we do that. Okay. We're just putting tying it down every which way. Current tire status. Well, that seems pretty good. Tire seems pretty good. You did not remove the chocks, so you won't be able to taxi. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the point. Okay. So, that sort of thing is what the walk around is all about. Tow. No. I don't need to tow. Maintenance report, though. Okay, so this is the maintenance report. Cylinders are okay. Cylinder compression, PSI, it's not in red, so it's probably good. And oil fluid. And we've got three available oil types. Oil filter is clean 98 hours before we have to change the filter. Uh, we've got eight quarts of the oil fluid. And we don't need to change our oil type for 48 hours. Oil pump is okay, fuel pump, fuel filter, all this stuff is okay. And we can take actions if necessary. Next page. Okay, fan stopped. Well, we don't need to. Good to go as far as the heater. Current charge. The max is 181 watts per hour and it's at 170. Okay, well there's some, there's some de uh, discharge. Well, let's just recharge it. Uh, poles connected. I don't know if I need to disconnect. Uh, that probably isn't too necessary since I'm going to quit soon. Struts okay. Tires are okay. Actuator and disc okay. So I guess the landing wasn't too bad and whatever the heck I did on the startup initially, it did not kill the thing. Alright, so there we have it. Uh, this was my first flight in the Cessna 172. It says volts here. I must be draining the battery somehow. I guess I can just turn it off now. I guess that'll be alright. I probably should have lifted the flaps as well. But I'll leave them where they are. Okay, yep. So, with this first experience with the Cessna 172 with the Reality Expansion Pack, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.